Hey, what's up? Zach King here from FinalCutKing.com. I'm going to be doing a motion tutorial here to show you how to do the text effect that is done in the TV show Fringe. I call this the Fringe Effect. If you've seen the show or you're a fan of it, then you'll notice near the beginning they have a section where some 3D text is tracked to the video. So I'm going to show you how to do that here in motion. Here's my final effect. So this effect is solely done in motion. You don't have to get any external plugins. And this should work for motion 3 and motion 4. So grab some text. Let's begin. Fringe effect. Bring up the size. I'm going to place it. It doesn't matter where you place it right now. Because the first thing we're going to do is go back to our movie and track it. Now, really quick, I just want to mention that I created a new group for this text. You can do that too and you can even title it text. I'm going to go to the movie, add behaviors, motion tracking, analyze motion. So what we're going to do now is this little red crosshair, make sure your playhead's at the beginning where you want to begin your tracking, and let's go ahead and find an area that's small but contrasted and stays in the frame the entire time. So somewhere in the middle should be good. It's only 95 frames long or something. I'm going to go ahead and hit analyze. Perfect. Looks like it tracked really well. If you need to go in and adjust any points in there, you can do so. Or maybe find a new point to track. I'm going to go ahead now and work on the actual text effect here because we've got the analyzed motion, okay? Now let's just have the text linked to this analyzed motion. Select the text group, add behaviors, motion tracking, match move. So now that we've got that in there, we've got an empty source well if you've got your HUD open, the heads up display. This match move here needs to have the analyze motion dropped into this well. Done. Now it should be tracked like so. So that's the first step, tracking your text to the footage. Next up, we're going to place this where we want to have it. By the end of the shot, I want it to be centered. Something like this. Now let's go ahead and select our text. We're going to go to Add Filter. Down near the bottom, there's a folder called Stylize. Come down to Extrude. And this is kind of the cheat I have here. We're going to adjust the angle here, again in the Heads Up display, and the distance. And you can kind of do this however you want. I'm going to match the effect they use on the TV show. We've got this little dot here that highlights when you select it. And this changes the 3D angle here. I'm going to go ahead and create the angle around 134, record, pull it to the end, the last frame, and then change the angle here to about, uh, about 70. That way we kind of fake the 3D look since we can't really do it in motion, truly. Now, notice the lighting. The first thing we need to do is add a light, object, new light. It's actually hit our video as well. We want to turn that off. Go ahead and select your video footage. Go to the inspector here. We're going to come down to properties and hit lighting. And turn this off. Perfect. So now let's drag the light where we want it. Somewhere right here, I'm going to turn up the intensity. I'm going to pull it back. Again, turn up the intensity and pull it back somewhere about right here. Now notice it's pretty obvious in this shot that the sunlight's coming from a sunrise back here, very bright, and this shouldn't be dark. If we were going to match this lighting consistently, which we need to do, then it wouldn't be darker in the back. It would be brighter. So let's go back to our extrude, and we can change that lighting right here. We've got face brightness and back brightness. You could probably guess what to do. The back brightness, we're going to turn that up. So it's almost glowing. And then we're going to turn down the front brightness almost like it's a shadow. Again, just match the same lighting here you see on the grass. It's bright in the back, darker in the front. We've also got our light in there to add a little bit of effect as we go by. It'll kind of light up the letters as if we're going through the sunlight. I'm going to push something like this should work. Cool. So then the next thing that we really want to do to sell the effect is add a shadow. So what we're going to do is duplicate this by hitting Command D. 
we're going to turn off the extrude and let's actually title this so we don't get confused shadow so what we're going to do now looks kind of like a weird effect on there but pull it down turn this down I'm using these 3d controls right up here and then I'm going to right click and hit shear I'm just going to adjust this a little bit for now go back to transform put it right here now here's the thing we need to create a new group put the shadow in there and we can't use the same match move it can't be in the same folder because this is further back and it's got a different tracking point we need to track something closer here so the shadow can stay where it needs to stay so go to analyze motion again by selecting your video and then hit analyze motion this is going to be our shadow I'm also going to name this so we don't start getting confused and then again go to the beginning grab a point closer to the camera here and it's going to be something uh, maybe this will work okay so it's done tracking here we've got a good track so now what we're going to do is grab our group of the shadow you can even title this shadow group I'm not being very organized for you guys here we're gonna go to motion tracking match move once again and you probably know what to do grab the shadow and drop this in that well so now it's gonna be stuck in that area so the trick is to place it somewhere at the beginning I'm gonna lower this down as well I'm gonna select the text we're gonna pull down the opacity like a shadow. Select the color. Let's also I drop some icy blue kind of color here. But here's a cool trick I'm going to show you. Let's go to the beginning. Let's start recording some keyframes and we're going to adjust the shear as we go. So and match the exact angle of this grass. Okay? Just like that. That way we've actually got the matched angle. And then the last thing for that is we're going to add the blur and defocus that shadow. You can even turn it up. I'm going to turn that, that shadow way up and actually turn on the opacity a little bit more. Okay? So check it out. There is fringe. That's sweet. Now, one other thing, looking back over this effect, one thing I want to do on the extrude of the original text is go to the front brightness and turn this down almost so you have like an outline there, but not quite. It almost smoothens the front and the back together a little bit better. Gives it a better 3D look. And then the back brightness, again, I'm going to turn that up a little bit more. I'm going to even change the distance here. I, I think it'd be good to have it go back a little bit further. One final touch up that I do to this fringe effect is this lens isn't macro, but at this point it would be out of focus and it'd sell the effect if we have a little bit of a blur, a defocus on the actual fringe. Turn down the amount, just keep it about three, hit record, and then as you come in, just about 26 frames in, turn it off. That way in the beginning it's kind of out of focus. You come in and it gets in focus. So there's the fringe effect here in Motion 4. It's my own cheat and I hope you guys enjoy. Post your video responses so I can see what you guys have done. Again, you can download this footage, the exact footage, and the project file 